Battlebit Remastered is currently blowing the internet up right now and for good reason. This game is truly a testament to the fact that graphics don't make a game, the gameplay and mechanics do. And whereas on the face of things Battlebit Remastered looks like a simple game that anyone could pick up, there is actually a surprising amount of detailed mechanics within this game that when mastered can really improve the way that you play. And in this Battlebit Remastered Tips and Trips video I aim to go over but a few of them. Now the first thing I want to talk about is vaulting. Vaulting in this game is extremely important and I really feel like it's being underutilized. The maps in Battlebit Remastered have a hell of a lot of verticality and as such if someone is pushing a building you're in and you can only go up or down the set of stairs this means that it's going to lead to a lot of choke points and you're going to die a lot more than you need to. But in Battlebit Remastered the vaulting mechanic actually means that you can quickly scale down a building by just spamming space when you are near a window. And I have to thank my good friend Trooper for this tip because the way that the vaulting works in Battlebit Remastered is you can pretty much fall from any height and if you're spamming space and you come by a ledge you'll be able to climb up that ledge and then not take any fall damage. This is incredibly useful if you're being pushed by another squad and you're on top of a rooftop and you can't go down the stairs. Instead you can jump off the side of the building, come into a window below them and go for the ultimate flank whilst they're busy looking for you at the top of the stairs. This is also incredibly useful if the building you're in is about to topple and you need to get down to the ground floor quickly or risk being crushed. The way that the buildings are designed in this game is most of the time if there is a window the windows are going to line up the whole height of the building. This means that even if the building is like seven stories tall and you jump out of a window as long as you face towards the building that you are jumping out on and press space when you want to re-enter the building you'll be able to do so without taking any damage at all. Next I'm going to tell you to turn off your death comms. Now look the death comms in Battlebit Remastered are hilarious and lead to some absolutely fantastic gameplay moments. But I'm going to tell you something, those gameplay moments are better when you hear the enemy. And by turning off your death comms, you are going to stop yourself from giving away your position all the time. When this game first came out and me and my friends were playing this, I had the death comms on and so did my friends. And the problem was, when you get taken out and you call out an enemy, this means that that enemy can also hear the call out. This isn't so bad if you're in a head-to-head to head firefight with another squad. However, if you're the sort of player who likes to take deep flanks and get behind the enemy, then when you get shot and then you give away your friendly's positions, instead of them thinking that they just took out one flanker, they are now looking for a whole squad. So if you want the best chance at getting better at this game, I would highly recommend turning off the death comms. Obviously in a game like this, that's all about fun and actually enjoying the experience. That might take away from that experience for some of you. So this is completely optional, but if you don't want to give away your friendly's positions, I highly suggest suggest that you turn these death comms off. Now the next tip is actually going to be about reviving and what I'm going to tell you to do is actually bind revive and drag to the same keybind and basically what this essentially does is allows you to start the healing as soon as you start dragging your friendly to safety. The actual healing animation doesn't take away from any of the movement speed of the drag itself so you're literally losing nothing apart from saving time. Also it's not going to really affect you in a bad way unless you try and bandage yourself whilst there's someone nearby. But all you have to do really is just look away from the person who's down on the floor and you'll immediately mitigate this factor. This saves so much time and allows you to much more effectively help people out on the battlefield whilst getting them back up and ready to fight, in turn increasing your chances of survival in any given situation. Binding these two actions to a single key really is just a time saver and a quality of life thing and especially if you're a medic is going to make your time in Battlebit Remastered that much more enjoyable. Next I want to talk about target acquisition. The targets in this game you would think because of their relatively large hitbox would be incredibly easy to spot. However, because of the low poly graphics and the lack of textures and lighting in the game, sometimes at distance it can be both very hard to spot enemies, but when you spot enemies, it can also be quite difficult to see if they're friendly or not. The first thing that I'm going to get you to do is make sure that you turn down the blueberries icon. This means that they're not going to take up the entire screen, and if you're fighting behind enemy lines, so you're basically looking back at your team, it's not going to fog up too much of the screen so that you can't actually tell who's an enemy and who isn't. 
isn't. Also, every single player in this game has little lights on their back that are going to indicate who they are. For example, a blue light on their back is going to be friendly, a green light on their back means that they are friendly and in your squad, and all enemies are going to have a red light on their back. This takes a little bit of time to get used to, but once you are used to it, it's going to become second nature and it gets extremely easy to spot who is friendly and who is foe. And the last thing I want to talk about with regards to target acquisition is actually a tip for any sort of big combined arms large scale first person shooter and this is something that i've been doing in games for years and that is that when you are scanning an environment make sure you are scanning from right to left because we are used to reading left to right and we always tend to look from our left to our right this means that our brain becomes incredibly complacent when we are doing so so when you are looking through an environment to find enemies they don't stick out as much because your brain is used to filling in the gaps when looking in this way however if you are scanning environments from right to left it means your brain is actively looking at what you are scanning and therefore you are much more likely to spot enemies that are hiding in the bushes. Next I want to talk about playing to your class strengths. I spent ages in this game playing as Assault and it only just occurred to me a few days ago that realistically Assault doesn't actually have that much utility. I like using the sledgehammer because I like making my own little holes so that I can shoot out at enemies without them expecting me to be there. However, there's only a limit to how many times you could smash a hole in a building before the rest of your teammates get really seriously pissed off with you because you're taking away all of the cover and making more angles for them to be worried about. Instead, mess around with playing with other classes. A good one to start with if you're new to the game is Medic because this is going to make you want to get in the action, in the thick of it and follow your team and get a better understanding of the flow of each map. Not only that, but because you're a medic, you'll be reviving people and healing people, which is going to rack up an insane amount of points and help you climb through those ranks a lot quicker. Similarly, if you are going to choose something like support, make sure that you are holding down tight angles and make sure you are actually supporting your team by giving them ammo and holding down flanks and making sure that the enemy can advance. The M249, for example, in this game is an absolute powerhouse at range if you know how to use it right and this is what I mean by playing to the strength of your class especially with support as well you get access to even bigger and stronger armor which absolutely tanks your movement speed but if you're using it correctly that shouldn't matter because you should be able to just hold down an angle and make sure that enemy can advance and take your points and then finally the last tip I want to give you guys is to just slow down I can't count the amount of times I died in the first few days just because I was running around like a headless chicken like this was called of duty although this can look a bit childish because of the roblox-esque graphics and the fact that it seems like battlefield one thing to remember is is that there's actually quite a lot of more like tactical features within this game and when you couple that with the aforementioned verticality of the maps and the fact that the destructibility means that there are angles literally being created all the time throughout any match the best port of call is going to be to slow the pace of the game down make sure you're using the lean features and the dragging features and just make sure you take every corner as if there is someone hanging around there the thing is with this game although it looks like a very fast paced arcade shooter because of these more tactical elements in the game you will serve yourself a lot better if you slow down and just take your time. But anyway, that's about it for this short little video on my best tips for Battlebit Remastered. I really hope that some of you found this useful. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. But anyway, that's it from me today. I'm Average Joel. Peace.